Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Clue Crew podcast. Today, we are here to discuss the haunted carousel. Um, so I'm here once again with Maddie. Hello. And Allison. Hey. And our special guest of the week. You might know him as the most chaotic Clue Crew member. We have Austin. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... I want to quickly apologize that we lost the Thorn Hall episode from last week. I feel terrible about it, but I'm not going to linger on it. We're going to move on and we're going to focus on this week. So um, I personally finished Haunted Carousel um, very last second. I hurried through the ending, but thankfully it's a very short game. Yeah, I'd been neglecting Marathon a little bit because I just came back to the website. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I played last week's and then I played Carousel, um, just for this purpose. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah, it is definitely a really short game, which actually makes me sad because otherwise this is pretty, up, this game's pretty up there for me. I just mm-hmm. wish there was more to it. And yeah. I I... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> but I was, I was going to say, you know, I really agree with that, Katie. Like, this is such a fun game, and it's kind of a shame it's so short. And I think, like, a lot of the, you know, most classic early games are pretty short, but this one feels, like, especially um, quick. And yes. I, this game, this playthrough, I was getting to the last riddle, and I remember thinking, like, no, I don't want it to be over. I can't believe that we're almost done. So, right. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I had recently just played this game, um, mm. uh, and when I was attempting to do a playthrough that I didn't get very far on, <laughs> and it, it took me longer when I had, like, less memory of it, but then mm. this time around it was really quickly like I think I did it over two days and like very short first and I was like wow that was a lot shorter than I remember even like Mm -hmm. from a few months ago um and so yeah it was interesting because like the last time I played it I was I really felt I think it must have been just because I was looking around more like I didn't have Mm -hmm. as much of an idea so I spent more time in the environment and it felt longer but I definitely think if you know what you're doing this one's really easy especially with all the riddles and things Mm mm-hmm yeah, right. I, I believe, I think it's definitely one of the easiest installments in the franchise. Um, and I think that that influences why it's so short. Because, you know, a lot of the puzzles aren't really that, like, the biggest yeah. one is, like, the, the puzzle with, like, the fuses. You know what I'm talking about? The, um, yeah. For the roller the, coaster? Like, the card fix puzzle with the fuses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, like, probably the most logical puzzle out of all of them. And then everything else is pretty much, you know straight riddle or like straight mini game so yeah that actually surprised me because i forgot like it had been a while since i played this game so i i didn't remember a lot of like the puzzles in this game but a lot of them are like just very straightforward like even like the um fixing the arcade game it's just kind of like there as plain as day Mm -hmm. and then yeah um, even miles uh Miles is uh, riddles. You just go ask Elliot, and he just tells you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, you don't even get to solve that one for yourself. And I've like always remembered the horse's name, so like I just mm-hmm. always type it automatically. Yeah. I don't even go try to solve it. Yeah. Like, in my head, I know what it is because mm-hmm. I play it so I just go in and I just type it in, and then I give it back to him. I don't even like attempt oh, to solve I- it. <laughs> I love the stenographer like stuff in the email though. I just oh, feel like too. it's so cool for some reason. <laughs> I hadn't actually like used it very much until um, probably my last playthrough before this one. I actually, or maybe two playthroughs before that, but I actually sat down and I clicked through the whole thing. I did each individual lesson. Like it's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have the name memorized though, so it rarely comes in handy for me, which kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> but the point. Austin that you made about all the puzzles being so straightforward like that's something I never even thought about but you are completely right like there are hardly any actual puzzles Mm -hmm. in this game yeah like the biggest puzzle is the one fixing the card reader yeah yeah maybe the one when 
her leg is trapped on the track and you have to do the wire thing. But yeah. Like, you know what I mean, it's pretty much phone calls and walking around and doing games. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and even the wire one is just kind of like trial and error almost. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, I feel like a lot of the other parts in this game that you could quote unquote consider puzzles are really more just like having to interact with the environment in certain ways, you know, like pick up yeah. the tape and the tissue strips to mm-hmm. you know get the notes for the harmonica or mm-hmm. I will or say yeah. order a Sunday to get the spoon. <laughs> I will say, even though I'm a puzzle person and that's usually, like, one of my favorite parts of the game, I almost enjoy this game for how much it's not, like, super puzzle-based just because mm-hmm. it feels so realistic. Like, I the agree. fact that you're interacting with the environment, you really feel like you're actually wandering around and, like, using what you have available to you to solve this. I totally agree. <clears throat> yeah. It does feel a lot more like you're on a case, you know? Mm-hmm. like. It's not like detectives, you know, go around having to solve logic puzzles all day. <laughs> right. so it does kind of feel like, uh, you know, she's going around and just figuring out ways of overcoming, you know, some kind of obstacle. Right. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's more obstacles in this game rather than literal puzzles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say, though, I feel like uh, the, you talked about the arcade game. I feel like they could have added more difficulty to that specifically. Mm-hmm. I think that could have effortlessly been a puzzle in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they had just kind of made the programming of it a little more complex. And it could have mm-hmm. actually taught people a little bit of programming. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Since we're on the topic of puzzles, I'll bring up my history with the light puzzle. <laughs> um, so you know the like the, the light puzzle. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you make the new rod for the carousel organ. Um, yeah. I I thought I was really cool at like age thirteen or twelve, um, <laughs> and I went to after school daycare, and and I brought this game with me, and we had like a kind of like a computer there that we could just use. So my friends and I put carousel on the computer and when we got to the life the life puzzle we kept poking our eyes out and we <laughs> kept being so confused about why we were poking our eyes out and then we called on our like teacher and was like why are we poking our eyes out and she was like are you putting goggles on <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Like, i will never forget i will never forget <laughs> the, coolest, the coolest thing to ever exist like just the game period and then as well as <laughs> the lathe puzzle poking your eyes out all the time. Um, I just, <laughs> my favorite, like, line in this entire game is when you walk in and Nancy turns and goes, oh, a lathe? Cool! And I'm like, oh my gosh, Nancy. <laughs> like, why are you so fascinated? Well, one, why do you know what that is? Because I would have never in my life been able to, like, see that and be like, oh, a lathe! And then, <laughs> like, the excitement about it. Like, she's just met, like, checked it off the bucket list, a lathe in person. <laughs> Right? Yes. Wow, a lathe! <laughs> Nancy's just like general excitement over the most random stuff is my favorite. I know. <laughs> like her with the telescope or the uh, microscope in um, um, Deception Island, where she's like, too cool! Wow! Yeah. <laughs> you look at the boat in the bottle and she's like, cool! <laughs> wow! <laughs> I've, also, I've also found it really interesting the way like your cursor changes when you do the harmonica puzzle yeah like, right the wind like there's mm-hmm. like never any other game I don't think that like changes form like that mm-hmm. um, like it totally it's like this blue wind cursor and yeah. it's the coolest, I, thought, I always thought it was the coolest thing as a kid I don't okay. how, like it just changed like that but honestly, with that harmonica thing, why did they stop it where they did? As right? far as when you yes. have to play the song. Like, it has driven me insane since I was a kid playing this. Like, why not just finish it out? Right? It also makes me upset that, like, even if you just want to play it on your like on your own on the harmonica, Nancy's dialogue stops you and goes, oh, that's the tune for, I should go play it for Miles. And I'm like, I just want to play it all the way through. <laughs> It's so funny. Yeah, I always He's, hated that, how it just cut off. Yeah, like, this why? This also, and the only thing that kind of surprises me, because I forgot, was um, how often we talk to phone characters. 
Yeah. There's yeah. a ton of phone characters in this game, and I feel like her phone is constantly just buzzing off of the hook. <laughs> right. <laughs> And it's always when you, like, get to either outside of Joy's office. Yes! Or, like, outside of Harlan's will. Like, yes! Like, outside of someone's door is when it rings. Like, it, does, yes. it never rings anywhere else. It's, like, right outside of everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah. it's getting to the point where it's like, enough, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, the phone calls in this one do get a little repetitive. I would say... This one and Final Scene are both, like, mm. really fun games, but they are a little heavy-handed with the phone calls. Yeah. Like, in a way, it's kind of nice because, again, like, that would be a lot more realistic, um, you know, having your contact, you know, call you and check in mm-hmm. instead of just kind of leave you to it. But, yeah, it is a little, it's a little much. Like, let's see if I can name every phone contact off the top of my head. So we have Kate <laughs> Harris. Mm-hmm. We have Louis Scarra, like the pro man. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, of course, Paula Santos. Um, mm-hmm. The Hardys. Mm-hmm. I think Best and George. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Lance Huffington, who got oh. his like, neck, neck injury from the <laughs> roller coaster. And then Timmy. And, and, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Anton Sukov. Yeah, and yeah, the Carousel Express. Like, and typically. um and you have um home as a contact, but you can't actually call mm-hmm. or talk to anybody. In a weird way though, it like it, it again, it is a little much. Like they could have dialed it back. But I do like that you do call so many people, you know, because it feels like some detective work, you know? Mm-hmm. Like And like, like you have to that... find those numbers too, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. See, I agree. I like, feel like this game does a really good job at staying grounded. I guess it was something mm-hmm. in this era, because this one was right before Danger yeah. on Deception Island. Just something about it feels realistic in a way that yeah. a lot of the other games don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, I mean, that's at least like eight phone contacts that you're required to call. Though. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. someone will call you back and like again and again. And yeah, it's, it's, it feels like a lot, but it also adds to it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because because like with other games, you learn information through you know various mediums, whether it be reading or you know like reading a book or reading a diary or you know an article or whatever. Whereas I, I do kind of like it being a phone character because again, it, it does kind of feel like you're trying to uncover like okay, you need to learn more about this, and we call this person. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool, and plus it kind of reminds me of like the books or at least the files. I feel like she's constantly trying to like contact people and learn more about stuff so i don't know i like that yeah yeah definitely also since we're talking about the phone contacts i want to give a shout out to kj paris for being like the only law enforcement officer that nancy has ever spoken to who is actually like a homie right i love his voice like (laughs) like his voice soothes me i love it i always (laughs) love it he does have a great voice but it's like you don't talk to him sorry what I was imitating him, but it wasn't going out very well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very good anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, you don't really get to talk to KJ Paris that much. But just from the couple of conversations you have, it's like he is actually being helpful and mm-hmm. cooperative and yes. nice and friendly. And he's like helping you out and giving you information that you need. Like, why can't they all be like this? Thank you. Oh, yeah. I know. The only other one I can think of that was somewhat at well was um the one in Shadow Ranch. Yeah, he wasn't bad. Um, either. Oh yeah. Like that gave you like the code if you promise to be careful or whatever. But other than that, they're all mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. All, all these characters. I don't know. I just felt like a random rush of appreciation for him on this playthrough. I was like, you know what? This man is actually out here like doing a good job. (laughs) And as I have been saying since the dawn of this game, Hardy Boys are at their peak in Haunted Carousel. Agreed. This is the best game for their dialogue out of the entire series. (laughs) There is not another game in the series that can rival this one as far as Hardy Boys dialogue. It's just so perfect. I love them so much in this game. 
I forgot to call them on my last playthrough. <gasps> Austin. I knew I was forgetting something, but I do remember that I loved it as a kid. <laughs> I have a post on my blog somewhere that is just, it was an initial post made by somebody else where they compiled like a lot of really good Hardy Boys quotes. But over mm -hmm. the course of time, as I've replayed the game, I've just kept reblogging and adding on with new quotes. I'm going to link it in the description of this video because it is extremely important to me <laughs> how many amazing quotes they have in this game. That's awesome. Absolutely amazing. But now, when... Frank's voice, uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, Frank's voice actor in this game is different than yeah. the, the big two, I feel, are like the Shadow Ranch, Blue Moon Canyon, deep voice Frank. And yes. then, of course, Jonah Von Spreken picked it up yeah. around, like, Kapu Cave, somewhere in there. Um, but this one, this voice actor is Joshua Silva, and I think he did Frank from uh, Scarlet Hand through Deception Island. So I like the sound and the intonation of his voice for Frank, but I don't feel like he acts the part quite as much as maybe the latter two. No. <laughs> I don't know. I, I trust your Hardy Boys knowledge more than I trust my own. <laughs> is Rob still Joe in this game? Yes, Rob has always been Joe from yeah, day like... one. My man, <laughs> that is forever my Joe Hardy. Love you, yeah, Rob. Rob Jones. <laughs> there is no one that could ever play Joe except for him. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, he like, is Joe. He is Joe. I'd be so thrown. Oh. I would argue that in my time experience with this franchise that I've gotten as used to his voice that I did Lonnie, honestly. Yeah. Because it's always been consistent and accurate and the same. Agreed. Mm -hmm. like, you know, like they've changed Best and George so many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like so many times, but she's always had Joe. And I got just as used to that as I did, as I did with Lonnie's voice. And even still, I mean, he still did Joe for Midnight in Salem. So yeah. Yes. He's like the veteran now of the series. Yes. Right? There's never been another Joe. Ugh. There never will be. What are you guys' feelings on Bess and George's voice in this in these stint of games? Um, I actually like this Bess and George. I mm -hmm. I overall prefer the later games one, like the Alibi and uh, Ashes era. Yeah. Pratt, yeah. Yeah, Jen Pratt for Bess, and uh, Kiara Motley, I believe, is the George that I like, that they often pair with Jennifer Pratt. Um, mm. But this was probably, m overall, my second favorite era, but it feels like a different version or a different iteration of Bess and George entirely to me. Yeah. It feels... That's true. It feels to me like a less characterized, specific um, Bess and George than mm -hmm. the current one, which is why I do prefer the current one, just because I feel like it really captures their <laughs> essences and their personalities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, but their yeah. banter in this era was a lot of fun. Yes, yeah. 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 Um, I was going to just say, like, I think on speaking of like on their banter, they feel more real to me in these older games than they do in the newer ones. And I think that's probably more of a matter of like the dialogue that they're given, but it just feels so much more natural as like, Nancy calling up her friends I mm -hmm. feel like in the way that they talk to her like there's always kind of something going on or like why they're together or what's going on and it doesn't feel as contrived to me and so I kind of for that reason I like some of the older stuff a little bit better mm. yeah I would agree with that because like I feel like in in the more later games I, I agree with kind of Maddie you and, and Katie where um the later games especially with Bess feels a lot more like Bess but their their like relationship dynamic doesn't seem as tight as you know in the later games because it felt like they had you know quippy you know jabs at each other but it was playful and it, you know they always kind of talked about like how, how their days are going or like you know what are they doing or you know it, it just felt a lot more natural um and it Agreed. didn't feel quite as you know like i don't know disjointed I remember that I preferred this 
mid-game version of Bess and George for a very long time. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Even into the newer versions. It wasn't until probably towards the end of the main series that I started preferring the new ones. But I honestly think that's Mm -hmm. just because I do like um, how each individual is characterized better. Yeah. Um, So I think Bess and George as individuals are better characterized in the newer newer iterations but i will agree with you maddie that i feel like their actual dynamic and the conversations that you have with them and the banter is probably a little better or more natural um, Mm -hmm. in this version and plus the older ones i think it was final scene had punchy liver herself right Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, which you know we don't have to explain to everybody how significant punchy liver is in this (laughs) in this fan of things but um yeah, I definitely agree that while I'm more accustomed to the newer iterations of them, that the older ones are a lot more real in my, mm-hmm. in my eyes. Yeah. Like a lot more believable friendship banter. Mm-hmm. Because a lot it's... of the newer ones are them trying to like solve solve what's happening together. And like in the past the past ones, it's just like they're at, like best and George are at home and like doing things at home. And then you have like Shower Medallion and Alabine Ashes, where they are they are present. Mm-hmm. Kind of. But speaking of voice actors, this is a good way to transition into something else. Um, <laughs> so the voice for Simone Mueller is also, I'm pretty sure, Paula Santos's voice. It is. Oh no way! And I'm you know who sure. else that is? Is it, it is. Professor Hotchkiss? Yes, too? it is Professor Hotchkiss. <laughs> oh no way! And Sally McDonald. I think it's I've Sally always, I've always been able to tell how it sounds like Simone. Um, but yeah, me too. Like Hodge, like, mm. it's crazy. Um, so that was a good way to transition to the Paula Santos debate happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I personally am not a fan of this woman. Um, <laughs> and it's specifically for two reasons. The first being, I feel like she is a horrible boss. She <laughs> constantly... I mean, she. I'm convinced that she would fire fire her just for playing Barnacle Blast. And then number two, just the way the way that she says certain things just annoys me. I mean, it's not like the voice actress is amazing, but like the way that the character says certain things has always bothered me. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know why. Um, yeah, <laughs> I but feel. But like, sorry, Julia, Julia, but Paula Santos, I'm not a fan of. I feel like Paula Santos is top two uh, bitchiest female indie contacts. What? Uh, yeah, Paige being number one. <laughs> oh, no, no, I was going to say um, that Paula's champion only by Chantal in Icicle Creek. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> but yes. other than Chantal, I would say Paula's probably the second worst um Mm -hmm. not even for any like specific particular reason i don't think other than austin i guess what you said it's just like she has this kind of snappy like way of speaking Mm -hmm. that just doesn't rub me right like Mm -hmm. ugh, i don't know listen she's not like that until you mess up and break all your bones which i admit (laughs) again read the room but like (laughs) but at the same time like She's under a lot of pressure. Like, her amusement park is haunted. Like, the roller coaster is out here potentially attempting to kill people. Like, it's a rough day to be an amusement park business owner for her. And she has taken this chance on Nancy. And then, like, Nancy has just, like, royally messed up. And she's like, oh, my insurance rates are going to be through the roof. Like, I can't deal with this. And, like, Yeah, you know what's going to be through the roof for me, Nancy <laughs> said? My medical bills. So, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> Only time, the only two deaths that occur where you do not hear from her are the like I don't think you hear from her when she gets skewered because she how do you do that? And she doesn't get fired when the culprit kills her at the end because she flat out is killed and dies. So <laughs> every other, every other thing that happens, Paula fires her for. I mean, listen, to be fair, Nancy's not going to be able to work the case with all of her broken bones. Like, she probably should be fired. Go home, rest, get some sleep, tall child. Uh, Paula could have said that, but she didn't. She was like, man, you know what? I can't afford this. 
Get That's out of my true. It wasn't part. the best thing. Listen, he's solely focused on the business. Here, here's my defense of Paula. And really, the reason I only like kind of am <laughs> supportive of her is because of her hiring of like of um Harlan Harlan, right? That's right. Security. Yeah. I- yeah. Because I'm like, okay, like, that, good on her for being like, listen, I feel like people, and especially when you call her and you, like, give her that information, depending on the dialogue options, like, if Nancy comes really strong on being like, this person is, like, a bad person because he went to jail, she gets really defensive, and I think there's kind of, like, this cool, nuanced conversation that she provides on, like, how you should give people maybe a second chance and, like, listen, like, it was in the past, and I think, like, he shown that he could be a good employee, and I want to, like open my doors for them and she also kind of does the same thing with Elliot I feel like like even though he's a procrastinator she's like he does good work and so far he's been able to like eventually meet the deadlines when we need him to and so like she's willing to work within your flaws until you go too far and burn down the entire uh hotel suite you're right yeah you're right I definitely agree with you there um it would help me my opinion of her if like I had a faith claim for her uh, because, like, you know, it's really just the phone. The phone is Paula Santos' face plane. Uh, <laughs> I've always, As with many others. <laughs> I've always imagined her if she's white. Because, you know, you never really can tell, like, phone, what ethnicity phone characters are. Um, she's always reminded me of Jane Caxmeric from Malcolm in the Middle. As if she's white. And then if she is Hispanic. I made a post about this today, and... Shout out to Charlena Purcell's laptop. Um, uh-huh. She gave a really good face claim, and it was um, Lauren Valdez from Dexter as Paula Santos. Um, I'm going to have to but, check these out. Yeah, I've always tried to imagine what I think she looks like to help me like her a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think it's mostly, like, again, that voice actress I want to say is Carrie Healy. Like, she is phenomenal, obviously. But I, I, I do feel like a little bit of why I don't like Paula is because of the way she plays her, like, as far as the voice acting. Um, which, again, obviously she's super talented. It's nothing against her talents at all. But I just think it's the way that she portrays the character. She's very no-nonsense character. Right. Like, these are the facts. Give it to me. Like, snap, 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 move on. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. I can't stand people like that. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. It's why I can't do anything like big business. I just, oof. Mm, mm-hmm. Like, that really irritates me and makes me mad. <laughs> but uh, that's, I'm not going to get on that soapbox today. Because people are <laughs> yeah. welcome to be who they are and how they are. So I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I will say that I appreciate that she gives you for one of the part. Um, because, yeah. number one, that's like a necessity for what's happening. And number two, like, if my boss was like, here is a free... Here is unlimited passes to get around this park and do things. I would be happy, but yeah. also at the cost it comes, knowing that any little thing could get you fired. I don't know. It's not any little thing though. Like <laughs> you do burn down the entire hotel at some point. Like they are very <laughs> extreme. It, I admit it again. The issue is that like she has no compassion when you're in pain. <laughs> But I can respect her firing me in all cases other than, like, the massive injury one. Yeah, the roller coaster yeah. one. I agree. No, I mean, I that agree. that one's not her fault. That one's the culprit's fault. On the roller coaster one, though, like, how do you die in that scenario? Because, like, it's right? just your foot. This has always bothered me. <laughs> like, her is it just, it, like, came... Smushed. It's not a high hill. Like, that's the other thing. Like, it's not, like, barreling down at, like, immense speeds. It just yeah. kind of calmly, like, kitty coasters down. Like, she could just duck and lay, like, on the floor. Yeah. The floor, and it would just run over her ankle, probably. <laughs> like, or her or her foot, I mean. I mean, still not fun, but, like, who needs to? Yeah, or she could cause... even, like, it's like, how do I say this? Like, step over the track so, like, it goes between her legs. You know what I'm talking about? You know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, it, like. Like, straddles the <laughs> like, coaster. Like, it, like, it goes between her legs. So, like, it doesn't even hit her. And she just like puts her other leg on the other side of the track, and then it mm-hmm. just like goes between her. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that must like, be that a be really a tiny than... roller coaster car. Because <laughs> it's like a a skinny short thing. It's not even like a really like a typical size roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, it seems like where she's at is where the roller coaster stops. So it's like mm. coasting to a slow stop by the time it gets to her. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the game tries to make it seem a lot scarier than it is. Yeah. <laughs> the more scary is the death by electrocution when you just all of a sudden, like, blow up and die. Well, I did yeah. that this time. I forgot to turn the power I off. always forget. And then I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I remember having that thought the last time. Okay, but since we're on the topic of deaths, I, I like, yelled this out earlier, but we were in the middle of something else. How do you get skewered in this game? I have not seen that right? death. Since, like, the first time I played this game, I have no idea how to trigger it or what causes it to happen. I was so expecting she, it to happen, too, and it didn't happen to me, either. She goes down under the carousel, and she pre- and if you press the button on... We you know you go, you go under the carousel, and you find the remote control thing. If you press the button, it activates it, and she's like, if I don't move, I'm going to get skewered. What and then, button? Like, the, the remote button. The red, the red button on the remote control that you use to, like, open the compartment in the haunted house. And right. Okay. But so I I know for sure in the past, I usually end up clicking on, like, the big red section. You know, like, there's and, a big like, red block starts up, the starts up and she's like, I don't know I'm going to get skewered. And then it, like, hits her in the face if you don't move out of the way. But, like, but that then, wouldn't skewer her. That would just hit her and knock her out or something. There's so also, like, a little tiny red circle at the top left corner of the device is that the button or is the red block the button i've always the red blocks always done it for me because i usually click on the red block part and it doesn't say if she's going to get skewered it just puts it in the inventory i don't know if you go watch um argo Fump's like death video because he makes a death video for every single game it might help mm-hmm. you but i'm pretty sure okay. if she clicks the button and it like starts the carousel and she's underneath it it hits her in the face and she I, uh, I don't know maybe I maybe I thought I was clicking the button maybe I clicked something I else. do recall <laughs> that it it is in the trailer of the game. right yeah it is in the trailer because um, yeah. she says that line um, oh yeah yeah because the only death that would come close to that is like the puffer fish falling off of the the ledge and oh. like not getting out of the way in time I forgot about that one like the like the ceramic for fish thing. yeah but i'm pretty sure it's the under the carousel yeah there are a lot of deaths in this game huh <laughs> yeah and they're all involved with paula santos <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll, I'll stop with the paula santos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, listen i have more beef with joy's dad this is my problem yes. like oh, no. I still, like, I just feel like there are better ways to help your daughter through her grief and anger management problems. Yeah, right. honestly. To build a robot and let her live in denial for years. Yeah, and then program said robot to call her a party pooping stick in the mud if she asks. <laughs> like, is this exactly. the thought of your child? Yes. Like, that's oh. so mean. What the hell? At the same time, I understand why Joy's the way she is. Because if she had a dad like that, yeah, I mean, like, it totally <laughs> helps her motivations of being, like, a turtle stick in the mud. Oh, wait, a party <laughs> being stick in the mud. Um, get um, the official her, title. Because, like, you know, her, her mom died, and then her dad was, like, she saw this puzzle about your mom dying, and to find out more information. So, like, crazy. We all know that I cannot stand Joy Trent, but I do feel sorry for her. The other thing is, too, like, Miles, uh, he was not programmed to sugarcoat any of this. He just, like, lays it out there. <laughs> like, immediately you solve a riddle and he's like, yeah, Joy, you had a lot of anger and you were really sad. And, like, you blamed all of your mother's death on, like, the carousel and you hated life and everything. Like, that was real traumatic. Like, you just came at her. Yeah. Like, Anyway, I feel bad. Really. I've always thought it was a beautiful picture of whoever that is. I've always that like seeing the picture of her mom is always what's is always what made me like empathize with her a little bit more. Because mm. um, it's like it's it was a, like I I can see the picture in my head, but um mm-hmm. yeah, that's always what's made that's always has been what's made me feel for her a bit more than what I used to. Yeah, I didn't, I did not hate her as much on this playthrough (laughs) as I did the one before it. 
I don't know what it was, man. I don't know if I just, like, had forgotten what she was like the last time I played this game. But it was, like, every word out of her mouth. I was just like, girl. <laughs> you need an attitude change. And it's like, no. I understand where she's coming from. I understand that she's struggling with a lot. But, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, man. I do want to bring up the topic though because it's my banner photo on tumblr um this is the first game in which <laughs> the culprit full out sexually struts towards her shut up, <laughs> shut up. i don't know i don't know not to like not to deny everything oh, that you're Dwight, about to oh, say Dwayne. but Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne is is true. <laughs> he knows he looks good <laughs> I ne I've never gotten killed at that at that part, so I. Swear. You've never gotten killed and stay tuned for danger there. I always play on junior detective, so. Um, oh. But you're you're right. You're right, and, and but like also this is what, it happened like from here up until like, Shadow Ranch, like the corporate did it every single time, <laughs> and, um, I remember I made a post a couple of years ago, and it was that picture of Elliot like coming towards her with his arms like that. <laughs> The caption was "Swiggy Sweetie coming for that booty." I remember <laughs> that post. It got like five hundred or six hundred notes. <laughs> like it was so funny. I um, just, yeah, I can't. Like the number of times that her was like, you know, what would be a great ending if the, the culprit just like makes this face with his arms out, like the sexual <laughs> just straight up like, murders her right. too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing is when culprits ha commit, like, a somewhat petty crime. I mean, like, I know, like, counterfeiting is pretty serious. <laughs> but, like, I don't know how many years in jail that would be. Maybe five, maybe ten. But, yeah, strangle a person. Right. <laughs> That'll do it. Just go ahead and add an entire life in prison. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and if nothing else, attempted murder. I mean. Go there or go home. <laughs> That is what Dwayne Powers believes. Yeah, I will say his is more creepy than anything else. Like, he's got the murder walk, it's patented, but, like, it's also a little terrifying. The red lights, man, for Dwayne. Yeah, that's what that's what does it. It's the lighting. He, listen, he it, is in a stage scenario, and he's like, it's my moment. Time to shine. <laughs> yeah, I can go back and, like, think about all 33 games, and the one death that always sticks out to me is the culprits doing that strut and just killing yes. <laughs> also i would like to say that um young me was so confused by the ending of this game because in my brain my little like 11 year old brain i was like i can't give him the jewels right? what am i doing <laughs> wrong you never had that street smarts conversation where someone came to your school and told you to chuck the thing as far as possible? No. <laughs> I feel like I just, I like lived that convo so many times. That and the internet safety one. <laughs> also, Elliot knows how to make a dramatic reveal. With that door, he's already standing there just waiting <laughs> yes. for you to open it. Fabulous. <laughs> Here's my <laughs> thing. Well, how is... What were you saying? Sorry. He just like swags his way in and then shuts the door. <laughs> yeah. How does he not know that Joy's horse is in the next room? Uh, true. Right. Because like it's right there. And that one's worth a eighty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. Like, why is he not for forging that one rather than stealing the other one and selling it? Well, so then wait, if Elliot isn't accessing the workshop from the same route that we got in there. Then how is he getting in there? Good point. Because all this time I assumed that he was going through that room that had her horse in it. But I guess you're right. Like, I wouldn't think that that would be the case. <laughs> yeah, he's coming through the other door. But, like, the doors can oh, both open. Like, you can access both of them. Well, doesn't the other door let out into the room where he, like, pushes the puffer fish on your head? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there was a door there the whole time. Nancy was just too stupid to go over and look at it. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't get to see it because we have limited uh, range of vision here. Mm-hmm. Right. We also forgot to bring up 
a death that could have been avoided the ring death that could have been so avoided. oh my god yeah like she literally just hits her head and then she's fired like i don't even <laughs> think it was bad enough where she would like have to go to the hospital but she does anyway oh my like, goodness she literally just hits her head it's not even that bad i don't think but then she gets fired it has been so long since i've gotten that death because you put it on like the letter um i've always put it on a certain letter on the sign and then like left it there and then clicked it when it was fine i think it's oh the, you're smart i forgot what letter it is but it's one of the letters on like the this when you get on the horse on the right of the screen there's like a sign and oh. i've always clicked my mouse on that sign and then when it was time when it when it lit up red that's when i would do it and it always accepts it for me every single time so yeah i usually go contact. through a fun card of deaths so i should <laughs> definitely do that more <laughs> pay attention to the letter and the sign i do want to mention also um this this franchise is notorious for having um romances take place in the past yes um, yeah and there's amelia and kessler in this and it's always been not developed for me is it like that for anybody else agreed yeah so i mean it would be very undeveloped for me yeah it'd be nice to know more because like in his letter he talks about essentially how like she's moving on um and he was like complaining not even sending his last letter um which apparently he didn't do but it would be nice to know a little bit more about them and about like you know their relationship and you know what led them to kind of having a tumult not tumultuous but like uh having issues yeah like why did she leave him that's what i always want to mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. i just feel like that'd be like even though I like, I don't usually want to necessarily read more of the books, but like that would be a situation that I would have really appreciated, like a backstory mm-hmm. in some kind of textbook. Yeah, because you've got things coming after this. You've got, of course, you've got Dirk and Francis coming after this comes mm-hmm. out, and you've got um, mm-hmm. something that I feel like is as important as Dirk and Francis, um, Jake and Camille. Yes, that's a different story. Um, but then this, you have this one here that's kind of lost over same with um haunted mansion and also i think marie antoinette a little bit too mm-hmm. it become until like shattered ramps that they really developed more about these historical romances yeah i think i think i prefer um rolf and kessler to the one in haunted mansion see i can't even keep their name straight in that game because <laughs> i really feel like they were an afterthought I kind of feel that way, too. Haunted Mansion. Whereas, you know, I agree, Austin, that they aren't highlighted enough in Haunted Carousel. Rolf and Kessler. Uh, Rolf and Kessler. <laughs> Rolf and Kessler. <Kenya. laughs> but I don't know. Because I, I feel almost like, I mean, not to talk about Haunted Mansion on Haunted Carousel week, but I feel like in that game, it's played out as if, like, their backstory is supposed to be really important and integral, but it's not. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this one, it's just kind of like, glossed over altogether which sucks and i wish it hadn't been glossed over but i don't know like at least it's consistent with the narrative it's also very detailed in the pieces that you do get like that letter is really really descriptive and even though it's like this one snapshot of a very specific moment it's a very detailed snapshot yeah and you've always had like you you know you you sit here and you have phone conversations about fishing with Tank, and I'm like, I don't care. I just want to know about Ralph and Amelia. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. care, too. I want to find out more about this romance that's glossed over. Agreed. I will I will say that letter is, like, the angstiest thing that right? I feel like I've ever encountered. Like, Henry Bolle, who, like... <laughs> what a heart he like, I feel like... What it? What is it? It's like something like it feels like my soul deep inside, like stormy, <laughs> like unknowable, and all yes. those like adjectives. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Katz and Kessler. Yes. And also, like, why is it on the ceiling of the carousel? That's I've a never good question. That. Like, that's always been. It's like if you don't have that um, yo-yo thing. You wouldn't have been able to figure it out, and it's just—it's always been a, something. It's always been a weird hiding place for me. Like I don't—I—I I would see, I could see something else being a better hiding spot than that. Yeah. I kind of assumed it just got swept up there, like from some winds or something, which, like, I know is kind of contrived, but like, I never ins- assumed it to be something intentional. Like he left it in there, and then like 
over the years somehow it ended up there. I do think it's cool how it works uh, within the game as far as like, you know, you go underground. And then when you're coming back up from being underground, you're facing the ceiling and you happen to see yeah. something you need. I think that works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, it is a little confusing as to why that specific letter is all the way up there. <laughs> I think I just... um, as well, it's, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, we probably won't talk on this point for too long because I don't want to like make, you know, leaps or assumptions or anything, but I do think somewhere in the game that it's implied that uh, Rolf Kessler had some sort of mental illness. Um, and so I don't, I hope that's not why Amelia left him. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I also felt like that was heavily implied and i don't remember i feel like it happened in a phone conversation with um uh whoever it is that's like the expert on kessler and the carousel horses not i not in this playthrough i didn't get it but in the last one i feel Mm -hmm. like i talked Um, a lot about the guy um, the guy you get his phone number from elliot's office what's his name you did we said uh, yeah and tons yeah. yeah, I think he mentioned something about, like, Kessler being very paranoid about, like, something. Right. Like, I don't think it's explicitly mentioned or anything, but I do think it's heavily implied. Mm-hmm. It says, okay, so I looked up the wiki page. Um, number one, there's a picture of him I didn't realize existed until today. Um, <laughs> it's in one of the books, right? Yeah. It says, um... Amelia was Kessler's beloved wife. She eventually could no longer take his eccentric personality and wild mood swings and left him. Okay, so then maybe that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, I think that sounds about right, because I think he talks about how, like, sometimes he'd be really, like, up and happy and, like, wanting to create a lot, and then all of a sudden he would have, like, a really intense kind of spiral. Wow, Uh, that's really sad. And she died of tuberculosis. And see, that's the thing. You talk about Camille's death and she gets hit in the head on the train. Mm-hmm. You talk about a Dirk's death and it's, you know, the hanging. But then if like if I would have like explicitly known that she had gotten killed of tuberculosis, it would have made it a lot more impactful for me. I think that's one of the interesting things about this game because I think it comes out and it depends on how you're playing it. And that's why I think you're at a disadvantage if you know this game really well because you're so focused on solving the riddles that you don't call the phone characters as much, which is where I think a lot of that dialogue comes out. And if you yeah, miss right. the moments, you like you lose that window of opportunity and like a lot is lost. Yeah, Agreed. because you find out about Camille, it, like you have to like, it's something you find out either way and same with Dirk. But like this is like, if you play play it this way, you will find out about it. But if you don't, you will mm-hmm. never know. Right. But it also makes it very, very replayable, too, to want to go back and see if you can find out more information about this specific um, relationship. Because oh, definitely. No, I want to, to find out more information about it, because I never really thought about how much you didn't learn about it until now. So, um, I will say, I think that this game is, like, top two as far as having the most obvious culprit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it is glaring <laughs> i feel like it tries to blame ingrid by doing the like that like that she helped out the um the guy that got lance huffington like <laughs> they, like make her think that she helped like she helped him out because she is kind of and then also they make you think that you know harlan's an ex-convict and they're never and the only thing about the actual corporate that you have is that he doesn't get his work done but then, well um, sorry oh, and the horse tails sorry i forgot about that the horse tails too yeah, the horse tails is like the dead giveaway to me. Yeah. And all the lumber. Right, that in combined with the all the wood that he ordered, yeah, for sure. But um I don't know, I guess maybe the first time you're playing it like as a kid especially, you're not really thinking about, oh, it's an art forgery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's um, how I feel every time Nancy says, like, oh, that's a lot of wood. I'm like, at what grounds do you have, like, a concept of how much wood is needed for, like, carousel reconstruction? <laughs> Very true. She confronts him. She's like, why do you have all this bass wood? And he's like, why do you have that piece of paper <laughs> or whatever? <laughs> like, I'll oh, take okay. that. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what else I love? I love how Nancy just stares at a ruler and is like, I can use this to measure. <laughs> it's, like, always been one of my favorite things. And she comes in his office and, like, takes the tissue paper and the tape. Like, it's like she comes into this man who is obviously so far behind in his artwork <laughs> and steals his tape and his 
tissue paper. Like you're behind paper. in your art. Let me steal your art supplies. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> At least she asked to steal. I wouldn't even ask. I would not even touch it. Especially knowing that Paula had talked about how bad he was prior to that. Mm-hmm. And then Harlan too. Harlan too. But yeah, I wouldn't have even tried to take it. You know what kind of you know what kind of sucks too is I feel like Elliot is like probably the most disappointing culprit for me though. Like he's kind of creepy, kind of creepy, but also very relatable, <laughs> and I like the artist vibe because I too am a messy creative person who wants to procrastinate all the time and I love riddles like I get him you know what I mean yeah (laughs) it just makes me so sad like if they hadn't made him a creep and gone for him being the culprit then he would have actually been a super likable character but that's how I feel about Rintaro too I feel like those are the main ones yeah who like would have been really really amazing characters if like they hadn't gone in the direction that they did with them being the culprit and everything mm-hmm. and plus just elliot's hair man <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about his hair and because it's just it's always been perfect it's like the total just dis, disorganized hairstyle <laughs> what? Um, it's it's like the people that style their hair to like say that it, they just woke up this way but like you can tell they put yeah. a lot of effort into making it look like that <laughs> amazing and also the anim- the animation when she knocks the paint on his supplies and he just turns around in his chair and it like 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 he does like he just does a full 180 in his chair and is like uh uh-uh. she's like uh oh oh god so funny uh oh that exact recording of her saying "uh oh" is used both for knocking over the paint and when the uh, roller coaster track locks down on her foot. Mm-hmm. Oh I think yeah, I didn't notice that until this last playthrough. I was like, "Wait, I just listened to this voice line." <laughs> <laughs> also, I think it's funny how blatantly obvious it is that uh, everybody's like, "Oh yeah, you know, Nancy spilled paint on what Elliot was working on," but in yeah. that scene, it clearly just lands on the floor, <laughs> like. Like, don't get me wrong, I'd be upset if someone spilled paint on my floor, but that oh, yeah. was that was not anything he was working on. Right. Like he just made that crap up. Get it right. <laughs> so Joy was like a financialist, right? Am I correct? And she's the yeah, bookkeeper. She's the okay. Yeah, because he he sends her away and is like, Don't return until Joy calls me. And I've always thought that was really kind of weird. I mean, I'm now that yeah. I know she's a bookkeeper, like why does like what why like she, she is not your intern she doesn't owe you anything like she doesn't have to go and get someone for you but she does that's true it is um, kind of weird wondered, like why he would refuse to talk to her until joy called him but then now that i know that she like probably had information for him i understand but what kind of information because like, i'm also confused <laughs> like it would make well it would make a lot more sense for him to say don't come back because you just ruined my project but he like doesn't acknowledge that he just totally says do not come back till joy calls me so it's like i've always wondered why he's like made her go and get joy like that okay because, yeah. like it's not really like his intern or anything but yeah i agree it's like always been kind of weird to me yeah like what is joy gonna do to make it better yeah i always just assumed it was because joy was like monitoring everyone's hours and so like she gives the a-ok mm. for like timing and like how much oh. allotted yeah because he's so behind so like she's the one who's making sure that he has enough time to like finish what he needs to do well that makes sense because he'd have to now work overtime to clean up nancy's right <laughs> um, okay that makes I'm, sense like, I, I could see him saying like you ruined this get out don't come back but he's like no get out and do not come back until joey calls me so it's i've always thought it was an interesting reasoning behind him kicking her out thank you for clearing that up maddie i feel a lot better knowing that <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, that does make a lot of sense. I'm not sure why I didn't think of it. Agreed. I, I didn't think about it either until now. Also, um, I would just like to ask, who is the friend who sends Nancy the key for the workshop? I assumed thought, it was Elliot. Me too, because yeah. when you do that is when she gets the puffer head ceramic death thing. You are correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. He was already ready for murder. Yeah, for real. As, as we've discussed at the end of the day, <laughs> planting those pliers and everything. 
I know. That was never really explained either, I don't think, was it? What? Like the pliers situation. They were just I found. Think, I think Katie's right. I think he put him down there so that she'd go to pick him up. Yeah, kind of, kind of like lure her into the room so that he could drop the puffer on her head. She never gives it back to Ingrid. She just keeps it. And <laughs> I, it. I love how Nancy like refuses to give lots of things to people in this game. Right. And then they're just like, okay, I guess if you really need to keep it. Oh, and also um, the food options in this game are... I love like, them. Totally make Nancy seem like this crude, like... <laughs> um, yeah. Like okay. she doesn't, she You're doesn't right. for vacation to splurge and like order a bunch of things. She's always like, "Can I have milk and instead of a snack?" <laughs> I don't know. I would say the two thousand calorie Sunday is a pretty big splurge. Yeah, <laughs> I just think it's funny. One, someone maybe it was one of you guys. I don't remember made a comment about that where it's like. You know, Nancy, if you're really looking for a healthier option instead of soda, water is always available. <laughs> like, instead of having milk or uh, orange juice, just get a water. The, the combos are just so crazy. Meal. Who is it? Who was it on Tumblr who made the post about, like, how horrified they were that Nancy ordering milk with a hamburger? <laughs> yes. Disgusting. Like, yeah, like, that's... <laughs> it makes me laugh so it, much. Like, you gotta go all out and drink, like, tea or, like, something. Because, I mean, if you're eating a hamburger, you're, like, halfway through an American meal. So it's, like, yes. Give me my um, sweet or, tea. Or at least water. Like, not milk. That's right. so... Yeah. That's always been so to me. I could see her drinking the orange juice instead of the milk for that, but not the milk. <gasps> the no. orange juice also just, like, throws me off. Especially with because pasta. it's, like, a veggie with pasta. Ugh. Yeah, that's disgusting. Especially in, in Like, that stuff. one is a milk meal. Like, I'm okay with milk going with that one. OJ has no place except for breakfast. <laughs> right, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I completely agree. But the way she orders it makes her seem like the prudest girl, and it's always been yes. so funny. <laughs> Um, I would like to have milk instead of a instead soft of a drink. Yes. <laughs> you see what I'm disgusting. Like. <laughs> <laughs> super pretty to me. With the milk instead of a soft drink, please. Please. I do like that, that the woman calls her out on the one dish. She's like, oh, a health nut. Yeah, she is not having it. She is not having it at all. <laughs> <laughs> which She's I think is funny. Drink. Which I think is funny because I ordered the fun day before I ever ordered a meal. Right. And so we order like this 5,000 calorie Sunday, <laughs> and then next time we're like, I'd like to get orange juice. And the lady's like, oh, so you're a health nut. Like, not according <laughs> to the 5,000 calorie Sunday that I just consumed earlier this morning. Thank you. I love how the lady is judgy either way. When you order the Sunday, she gives you like all the unhealthy details, like to shame you. But then if you also <laughs> try to eat healthy, she, she shames you that way. There's no winning. <laughs> Yes. This is the game when she's like, an outside line will cost you an arm and a leg, right? Yes. Yeah, that's always stuck with me. That's always resonated with me. A little me bit, too. Like, the she does not want to be there. Because like, it's like her sister or something is away, so she's taking over or something I'm like that. I'm filling in for my cousin Amber. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> On the topic of the fun day, I always, I've always imagined... Um, or have like gotten hints of like Elliot totally hitting on her during that whole riddle bit. Oh, like, like that, and especially when he says things like um, procrastinator's dream. Like he's always given me senses and like he's hitting on her. And then if you look him on with, like what he does at the end of the game, it's always been like <laughs> like an act. I guess it's been like an act to me. I guess I guess it's like well. his act, but he's always given me like vibes that he's like hitting on me. I don't know why. Wouldn't, wouldn't be the, the first or the last character to hit on Nancy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Despite like, her poor fashion taste. I know, right? I'm like, when, especially when you consider her poor fashion taste. I'm like, Nancy had better be the single hottest human being to ever live. <laughs> based I mean, maybe on that's... how many people hit on her in these games. So yeah, you mean she has to be Kenny McMahon? <laughs> yeah. That's my girl. Kennedy McMahon is gorgeous. She is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm heterosexual, and Kennedy Mc McMahon is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm using her for all of my movie castings for the show, for all of the games, because she's perfect for the role. Yes, I agree. She's fantastic. But yeah, I've always felt like Elliot's been totally into Nancy. I kind of see that. Yeah, he just, he's so overly friendly. 
But I think it's probably like you said in that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like, see, oh. that's just another thing adding to his creep factor that, like, if it hadn't been there, he would have been really cool. <laughs> and also, I feel like her objective missed a very, very good chance of making Ingrid and Lauren Corey related. Like, they've, like, uh, it was speculation. Everybody was assuming oh. they were going to be related. Um, I forgot I, about I, that, but yeah. I, I wonder if, like, Katie Karanis, like, had planned them to be related because at one point, no, Ingrid, does, Ingrid doesn't say she has a sister, does she? I don't remember. But um, Ingrid's, Ingrid's being... Ingrid and Lauren kind of say things in a similar way. But I really... Ingrid's always been someone who I've avoided. <laughs> because yeah. she's always come up as rather... Um, rather rude to me. Like, she's not all around <laughs> horrible, but I... She's not the kind of person that I would want to associate much with in real life. <laughs> Like, she tells Nancy to, like, eat her vitamins, and then here comes Nancy <laughs> ordering orange juice and milk with her chicken. <laughs> so, like, that's always been weird to me. How and would then, Ingrid like, feel about Nancy ordering milk with a hamburger? Right. First, she'd be like, why are you ordering a hamburger? Period. Eat <laughs> that peanut butter. Get that niacin. <laughs> Which somebody did a whole post about, and it's like, if she were truly nice and deficient, she would be, like, hallucinating <laughs> or something, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember the post. And I've always like, assumed that she bought, like, that watch with the money that she got from Lance. Is that correct? Yeah. I, yeah. So are we, do we believe that she helped Lance Huffington, or do we buy her, like, I was helping him? um with like a medicine with and then yeah her, um, right because the other thing is she's selling roller coaster designs to another company yeah no i miss i sorry I, I misunderstood what you were talking about um i think she bought the watch with the money from the roller coaster thing where she like mm-hmm. was being paid to help with the roller coaster thing because she mentions later when you talk to her about it how the guy knows that she's taking a risk and so he pays her really well mm-hmm. yeah i think i don't know i don't know if i buy it that was also their way of making her look suspicious because right after finding that, you find Lance's number, like right near that area. I'm pretty sure. Um, so, or is it on her? It's either on her desk or at the computer one. Yeah, it's um, on her but desk. She, like, finds his number right, right near that area. So that's always been, and plus that like, car, that sports car brochure she has, mm-hmm. has always mm-hmm. been interesting to me too. Mm-hmm. I like low key kind of still think that she was working with Lance Huffington. I think she, she was doing both. But Tori was the one who stopped the roller coaster. Yeah. Oh, that's true. But I yeah. think she could still help him with the committing, like, insurance fraud, though. Yeah, and doing the lawsuit. Yeah. Like, I giving mean, him the idea that, like, that's what he should do. Yeah. Agreed. But is there anything in the game to really support it at this point? I mean, the, I the just mean... <laughs> like, the fact that she's calling him. Like, because he doesn't have... It, it appears after like, that was kind of part of why she was suspected was, like, the interaction of, like, when she calls them and then, like, yeah, when yeah. is getting. That's true. Because, I mean, really, my only my only question for you was going to be, like, well, why, you know, what implies that there is this connection? Like, why would she be talking to Lance Huffington? But it's like, well, duh, you heard she has his phone number. Like, we literally mm-hmm. know they're already talking about it, about something. Yeah. And I mean, the dude is super uptight. I always <laughs> imagine him like wearing one of those dog cones. Yeah. Neck. <laughs> you know yeah huge about? neck braces. Yes. yes. And like just sitting on his couch, like with his feet on the coffee table, just watching like soap operas all day with waiting for him, waiting for the phone call saying he's going to court. Like he's I just like, love how dramatic he is. Like that voicemail. Listen, Austin, oh. you talked about Elliot hitting on Nancy. Lance Huffington. Is it's hardcore. Like, oh, baby, you'll get millionaire. Yeah. Coming at her. He's like, who's this? <laughs> like, oh my God, shut up. <laughs> Go away. See, this, the, the phone call is the other thing that makes me suspicious of Ingrid because he implies very much, I feel like, in that phone conversation. Like, he, he talks about how her plan worked really well for right. him and it worked perfectly. And, like, he's about to go into court. And, like, I don't feel like that would be the case if he was really talking about a home. Yeah, like, he doesn't explicitly say that her plan is linked to why he's going to court, but Mm -hmm. I also don't really 
I don't know. I guess you're right. It, it seems a little ridiculous he's so that it's happy he's, about the whole thing. Right. Like, oh, yeah, her plan worked like a dream. I'm sitting pretty, whatever. And it's like because she gave you some oils to rub on your injuries. <laughs> like, it does seem <laughs> very flimsy when you put a magnifying glass to it. Mm hmm. So yeah, I, right. I I agree. There is something fishy going on. Can you actually call him back? You can call him called. back, but he doesn't answer. You just okay. get the voicemail, but it's a great voicemail, and I highly recommend it. <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> I do want to shout out my boy Jonathan Spreakin though, because he voices Harlan, and that is the most believable Boston accent there's ever been. Love it. Like that is the best accent and i just now like learned it was jonah and i'm like floored yeah man jonah did like everything in this series which is why he's my least favorite frank voice mm. unpopular opinion but it's true because anytime i listen to frank in the newer games all i can hear is shorty and oh andy jason that, yeah and that would ruin Harlan. like i can't hear him for Frank because I equate his voice to so many other characters already. And I just feel like Frank needs to be separate in my brain yeah. from all of those other characters. Like Joe yeah, is separate. Like Joe Dwayne is Rob all. Jones. <laughs> and that's the end of it. You know? I don't like him as Dwayne at all. Like it's totally different from Dwayne's voice in Center for Danger. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, Jonah, Jonah killed that accent. Oh that yeah, for sure. I didn't mean to go on a Frank Hardy so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's it's ob it's obligatory at least once yeah. in the podcast that's fair gotta go off topic okay. in favor of the hardy boys <laughs> i mean but who wouldn't and i Honestly. always i saw a, i saw this post and i reblogged it so fast i always accidentally click on can i watch the carousel talk oh, <laughs> yes i think that was that emily annoying. nancy drew game things I've done that Shout before. Shout out to you, Emily, because that is the most relatable post in the world. With with the that one and the um uh, uh Thornton Hall one. Thornton Thornton Hall Hall one. Yes, yes. Right. so annoying. I do the Thornton yeah. Hall one a lot. I did the carousel one so many times, and it's so long. Yeah, the carousel tape is takes forever. Yeah, this one's I longer. Just, why do they include that option? Like, <laughs> you've seen it once. Why do you need to watch I it know. again? The way I play, like, I'll see there's a dialogue option and click on it without reading it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, what I'm talking about, like, I'll click on it without reading it. And then yes. afterwards, I'm like, crap, I clicked on that carousel. <laughs> and I mean, it's cool to watch the first time. But, like, after you've played the game over and over again and, like, you keep clicking it, you're like, no. If it's been a while, I'm convinced I missed something in the video. And then, like, I will, like, intentionally click the option and, like, keep thinking I'm missing something. Oh, mm -hmm. but I've always oh. thought the concept of like a haunted carousel has been super dope, even though that like the explanation was that it was a remote control, but like still, it's always been a super dope concept for me. Okay. Also, mm -hmm. on on the note of like the the carousel being haunted, something that like I had never previously considered before this playthrough is that um because like the whole haunting is idea is that if the horses were ever separated and they were separated when joy's mom bought the horse and right. then she dies that night which i had never put together as like oh is that what we're supposed to like like i mean obviously that's not really what happened but like i wonder if that's like designed intentionally to be like, like, like a killer that was the curse like yeah you get you, it's like the ring but with the carousel <laughs> yeah like she's the one who separated them and it was the day that she separated them and was like planning to give it to joy that she dies i've always that, thought that, like she knew she was going like people sometimes are like i knew i was going to die so i did i did this and i've always thought it was like well she knew she was going to die so she just gave it to her because it's like sometimes people get that feeling like you know i know i'm going to die um, which i mean that's, let's not talk about that but anyway um I've always imagined that she just like had a feeling that she was not going to be there very much longer, so she gave it to her. But mm -hmm. I really like that premise more that maybe it, like it's always had that supernatural resemblance to it. Yeah, that, like, I love if that. you get it, you have bad luck or something or whatever. Mm hmm. I had just never thought about it, like, because I always was like, they, they introduce that concept and then it feels like totally disproven when you find out that that horse wasn't original. So, like, this time I was like, wait, oh, maybe that's why the story was included, but I don't. The true haunted horse is that one horse ma zebra making that face. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes! 
the zebra face on yes. the carousel when it's like teeth are in the air. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's my true. favorite. Uh, <laughs> so, Austin, you've been around for a while, and Allison, I guess you have too. Like, do y'all remember that post that somebody made where they were like, they just went on like a paragraph long rant about <laughs> that zebra, and they were like, this is my yeah. favorite horse. All of the others are looking all demure with their heads bowed, and the zebra's just ass naked <laughs> staring at the screaming in the sky or something like I that. Saw it. I saw a not safe for work submission on that blog that used to happen, like NSFW Nancy, and it says something oh about like all having a horse fetish, and that's why it looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> but Which of the it. sorry? I've also oh. always enjoyed that um, mini game with the um, not s- the where you like shift around and get the the surfer to the shore. Yeah, that, that one's is so what fun. I was about to bring up. I was about to ask y'all which uh, arcade yeah. game was your favorite. We're telepathic. Um, <laughs> definitely Barnab. I hate Barnacle Blast, y'all. I'm sorry. I've always hated it. I mean, I know it's like a generic game style, but I've always hated it. But I love. I love the squid toss and the the the, the surfer one, but the surfer okay. One. okay. So here's the thing, here's the thing, right? Um, Barnacle Blast is not terrible on junior level. It's a nightmare on master. Do not would not recommend to my worst enemy. Um, <laughs> but in secrets can kill too. It is amazing. I love it in secrets can kill too because I think it's much more maneuverable when you can do it with your mouse. Um, but in Haunted Carousel, you can only use the keyboard, which oh, is true. really hard. Yeah, and also when <laughs> Secrets Can Kill 2, doesn't it spell out one of the, like, I think it spells out Saul's initials, doesn't it? In one of the levels? It might. Because yeah, I think, I think so. Saul is the game after that game came out. Yeah. So I think it spelled out, like, Saul as one of the Barnacle Blasts, and you, and you like, do go through Saul, which I is really cool. I think you're right. But, but um, um, yeah. Chorus sucks. The one in <laughs> yes um but austin i agree with you uh, my favorite is also the swimmer's itch i think it's really fun i've always enjoyed those like gridlock puzzles yeah i agree my favorite one is the one in cap but i like me that too, too me too me too that's I the one that they made favorite. into a uh a, a, a mini game app on her phone and i what play it all the time in the newer games <laughs> oh that's so fun i love it on her phone Wait, they have a mini game app on her phone? If you got the bonus edition, they do. Oh, I never did that. I was Oh, is that only on the bonus edition? Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. I've only pre ordered Thornton Hall, so I can't say much, but I'm pretty sure it's only on the bonus edition. It's because you get the phone charms and you get that. They get like that, the game app. Yeah. I didn't realize that the mini games were only bonus editions. There might be one game where it's not, but I'm pretty sure the rest of them are. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. Do you guys ever try to get, like, the extra prizes? Because I only always just get the harmonica and the, and the yo-yo. Oh, yeah, I, I always got get time all, the game. For all the prizes. I never Really? Do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Anytime you can buy anything in the games, I always buy all of them. The See, I don't, ha- I don't have that impulse. <laughs> yeah, the harmonica is hard enough to get as it is. Yes. Um, so, like, I just stop there. I don't try it anymore. Because um, don't a lot of the other ones require you to do Barnacle Blast again? Yeah, because you got to get both of those tokens from the Barnacle Blast. Ugh, yeah, I you know. have to go to, like, level two or three to get both tokens. They only have two for Barnacle Blast, I believe. See, That's I don't right. hate Barnacle Blast too much, except for when you only have one, like, thing left that you Ugh. need to blast, and then you lose, like, Ugh. a little ball. Yes, and, and you I keep, just... like... <laughs> bouncing in full circles around it yes, but you can't get it so, to yeah, line up. Like, you've been doing it for 10 minutes and then finally at like the very end and like you miss it on the the like downward and then you just want to check your computer yes oh my gosh um while we're at the arcade area this game has the weirdest easter eggs out of any single game so there's the, like the easter egg that you get in ingrid's office um do you guys know about that easter egg no. no. You when you're facing her door leaving, you um click the upper left corner, um and she gets a phone call and it's like a quiz show and the person's like, "What is the capital of Wisconsin?" And you have to type in Madison, and you get an Easter egg as your prize. What? And you use that Easter egg 
in the arcade area and you like get a phone call from Nancy in the future. I think what? she's in. I want to say she, she's calling herself from old clock. Which what? I guess I next. The, she calls herself from a from another game. That's no, it, weird. It's it's haunted mansion. I think it's haunted mansion. She calls herself from haunted mansion and she's like, I need. I'm currently like. I'm here in haunted mansion, and it's 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 super weird. It's a weird Easter egg. What in the world? I need this. Huh. Also, I need you guys to know that in the middle of Austin's story, I exclaimed, what? Three different times, but my microphone did not pick up my voice for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) I just want you all to know (laughs) that I was shocked. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. So you go to Ingrid when she's, when she's not there and you leave her ex, her like exit door that has like the bad food, no poster on it. And there's like a, a red sign in the upper left corner and you click on it and you type in like Madison is the capital of Wisconsin and you get the Easter egg and you put the, you actually put the Easter egg on the horse tails. So when you put it on the horse tails is when you can go to the arcade and get the phone call. And the phone call is from Nancy in San Francisco and she's like, I'm at Rose's right now in San Francisco and I can't figure out where to find the key to the attic. <laughs> what in the and she's world like, she's like it's and she's like and then nancy and carousel respond and it's like oh it's in the it's in the um cash register in the basement and then hold on mansion it seems like oh okay it's super weird that's bizarre so i encourage you to try that next time and do it so you can see it for yourself but it's super strange yeah i kind of need to do this now it's the weirdest easter egg i've ever seen in, in the entire <laughs> yeah i love finding the easter eggs I don't know how people do it. Like, I'm always so impressed. Especially the ones that, like, require you to click a bunch of times. Like, I don't yes. have the to be clicking on things 30 times. Especially, well, in, um, which one? especially in the newer ones when it's an award to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. There are a few that I think are fairly easy to find. Most of them. I'm just like, what? <laughs> how did somebody even find this? <laughs> yeah. In one game I have never found one in, and it's Shadow Ranch. I cannot find that one anywhere. Mm. But other than that, I think there's one per game. I didn't know there were Easter eggs in like the old games. If they're not Easter eggs, they're like little surprises that are considered Easter eggs. They're not like mm. physical Easter eggs, but they're like well, right. Easter <laughs> egg with a more symbolic term. Interesting. Do you guys remember that whole trend about like the baby and the um yes added and called You know what I'm talking about? Like yes. stuff like that. Stuff like that. I mean that's probably not real, but like stuff like that still. It's something very, that you only have to experience, like, for yourself to understand. Very interesting. So, yeah, there is an Easter egg, and that's how you get it. Huh. Well, we have been going for quite a while now. Yeah, we have. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> do you guys want to say any final words for this game? Like I said, it's always been one that I thought has been super easy. And I have repressed daycare memories over it. <laughs> it's on my nostalgia list for sure. Yeah, I would say I, I really do enjoy um, just by being in this game. I think it's really fun to just kind of be around in the environments and stuff like that. I wish it was longer. And I wish there was a little bit more puzzles, but I think also the fact that it feels a little bit more realistic makes it interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think I agree. It's I just think it's a really solid game. Like, it's not necessarily a standout, but I just think it's really well put together, and I really mm-hmm. appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. And I want yeah. to read the book now to see how it's different. Like, I don't really a lot where I say I want to read the book, but I think the ones I want to read the book <laughs> for are Final Scene and then Carousel and then probably Secrets Can Kill. I want to read the book. Um, I've read uh, all of the books for those ones that you listed. But the Haunted Carousel one is is pretty different, but I really liked the book version a lot. Cool. Is, like, Elliot or any of the characters the same? I'm trying to remember. I feel like, now I don't remember. I feel like there was some that were changed. Or, like, names, but they're, like, generally the per- people that yeah. are inspired by or whatever. Yeah, I see. Professor Hotchkiss is a yeah, man? Secret Secrets Kill Kill one is wild. I still can't get over the fact that like Nancy is all on board. Oh yeah, she and like Daryl. Yeah, with Daryl. 
<laughs> I can't. Oh, um, I'm mentally scarred. <laughs> yeah, just the knowledge, forbidden knowledge. It is yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, I agree with all of you guys that this game is actually really good. I, I'm pretty sure it's in my top fifteen, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I just wish it were longer. And I do wish that they had given it a little more oomph as far as the puzzles go and just stuff that you have to like use your brain to try to work out a little bit more. Um, Mm -hmm. But like Allison said, I appreciate the realism of it at the same time. So, yeah. (laughs) All right. Awesome. Well, uh, have a great night, you guys. Thank you for joining me for the podcast. Yes, thank you so much. Especially yeah. thank you, Austin. It was really fun chatting with you ten, uh, no, tonight. No, you can join. I know I talked a lot, but, you know, that's me, chaotic and all. It's good. <laughs> it's really but good. It gives us a lot to no discuss. Good. I'll be back for Phantom of Venice, so. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, <laughs> next week we will be back um, with what? Uh, Blue Moon Canyon? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Very cool. Then I will talk to you then, Maddie and Allison. Austin, I will talk to you for Phantom of Venice. <laughs> yes. All right. Have a good night, you guys. Good night. Bye. Good night.